when we look at the, the concept of have and have nots, you know, the 99% and the 1%, and those are big in the social consciousness right now. Everybody's wondering about that. And, and the very wealthy people are very defensive of their situation, and the poor people are going, wait a minute, this doesn't work for us. The reason that I wrote Sacred Economics, and what I really hope people who read it take away from the book, is that we're not trapped in a system just because we were born into it doesn't mean we have to continue to operate in that same system if it no longer serves our needs. And it's okay to ask questions. In fact, it's important to ask questions. So when I look at something like the monetary system and say, what's the trouble with the monetary system? The fact that it's not a real resource is a big issue because what we're finding ourselves doing is in order to accumulate more of this artificial resource, which is really a placeholder for the re actual resource we're going to use. I have to exchange the money in order to get the resource. But the way that our system is, is set up currently, we consume the real resources, convert them into products in order to make more of this money, which we perceive as the better resource. And ultimately, there's a cannibalistic aspect to that, that we make more money the more of our natural resources we use up. And that's creating enormous problems for the planet, for the species. It's damaging the web of life. And if you take that to its logical absurdity, we're going to end up with piles and piles and piles of monetary symbols and no real resources to spend them on because we will have decimated the planet. <laughs>